We got a nice uh, councillor out here today. Oh, yeah. Trying to hit each other. Running for council. <laughs> Josh <laughs> Smith Holly. Yeah. And got a number of different planes. As the International Model Park gets closer for the summer of 2016, so if you're thinking of coming out, give Bruce a contact on XJet on YouTube. And then there's Gordon, he's taken his. No, it's not really like Bruce's, it's just to touch it and it flies. Oh, choice Gordon, the target. Yeah. And there's Phil, <laughs> and he's got his bonsai with a lawnmower blade as a prop. Oh, God. Really? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So we got one, two, three, four in the sky with Gordon five. It's looking pretty good. Oh well, we'll close that down. Oh wow. Yeah, there's no way to do that. <laughs> there's nothing in there at all. The thing is that's 90 dollars from China. So it's not an expensive hobby anymore. It used to be really expensive, but these days it's pretty damn cheap. How much? To be honest, I'd much rather see kids out here getting a real tan than getting a PlayStation tan. Yeah. <laughs> and learning some valuable life skills rather than just like hand-eye yeah. coordination. It's interesting too because... Well, one of the things I want to do is, um, that's probably my only election promise, is to have start from people who are struggling on the benefit, bouncing from benefit to part-time job yeah. to benefit, you know, skimming along the bottom, yeah. is to have courses that are set up so that they can identify areas in their life that they are okay at and build on those. Yeah, yeah. But have it so like it's like good for the community. So if someone, you know, everybody has to spend a day, go out to specific areas, pick up trash, and then say there's someone's dumped a whole lot of wood or you know, yeah. crap somewhere. And then have a carpenter or something say, this is what this trash actually is because nothing's actually trash. Yeah. And then so then they'd spend a day picking up the trash, then a day learning about how to repurpose it, yep. and then a day of who can we sell this to, is there a market behind this kind of stuff, so yep. people can actually think more than just, oh I'm just a bum, you know, yeah. people can think, oh, I can be a business owner or uh, As I said to like Amy, the, the, best, the biggest thing you can give anybody is opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity, exactly. if you give people opportunity it's up to them to take advantage of it. But most people, when given opportunity, will do that. And yeah. But if you deprive them of the opportunities, then no amount of subsidies or benefits is going to do a damn thing. Yeah. And um, we need to we need to really open the broad, broaden the horizons of people in this town. Yeah. And uh, currently, the council just has a couple of little narrow little niches that it likes to focus on because it suits the councillors. Yeah. It's not about what suits. In fact, it was interesting because I was at the meeting last week and um, one of the councillors stood up and gave his opinion on something, you know, blah, 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 I'm thinking, this isn't about you, it's about the people you represent. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really care, you're one voice. You're supposed yeah. to be representing effectively thousands of people through your election to council, so you shouldn't be saying, this is what we should do. You should be going back to your the people who voted for you and asking them what you should yeah. say, not just telling because you've been elected to represent, not rep elected to rule. There's a big difference. It's a democratic system. Yeah. So they need to... Um, need to do more consulting with the people and I think Roddy had a good idea with the community board, I mean works in t -Rail. You you extend your democracy, you fan yeah. it out because if if we have, um, you know, like, how many councillors do we have Roddy? Uh, Ten councillors. Ten councillors, how many people in the district Roddy? 22,000. 22,000, so imagine if every person in the district contacted their councillor once in a year, that councillor would be so busy yeah. they wouldn't know what to do. So. It, we've immediately limited the democracy by limiting the amount of resource we've got. But you can put a community board out there, then people can go to the community board, the community board condenses it down, presents it in a concise format to the councillors, they can listen to a lot more stuff mm. in a given period of time for a given amount of effort. And that's the way democracy is supposed to work. It increases democracy. You want to fan that out as much as you can. The current system is very limited. And that's something that they should be really concerned about. The other thing the council needs to be concerned about is the, the disconnect between council and the community. Yeah. So many people I've spoken to, and I've said, well, why didn't you uh, make a submission? Why didn't you do this? And they've said, it's no point. They don't listen. And that's it. They don't listen. So if they have that image amongst the people, that's only going to be created by the fact that they're not listening. But here's a point. Josh, you got an email from Bruce, and you, you're out here on the strength of that email. So what did you say in your email, Bruce, and what did you respond to, Josh? 
I just told, I just presented a proposal for the airfield and presented the facts and invited the candidates to uh, respond with an idea of whether they support my initiative or not. Okay, and you've come out here first person to come out, Josh. So what did you hear, what did you read when you read the email from Bruce? So it was a video, um, well I read the little blurb about here's my proposal and then I watched the video of Bruce here at the <laughs> airport <laughs> showing <laughs> absolutely no planes. <laughs> There's no nothing. Some hangars with didn't go in there, but you know, there's planes that nobody uses. And that if we delist it, um, we can bring a whole business load of people here, and they'll be here. It won't be just for like a week of the year, like the um, the model jet people. <coughs> um, you know, kids can buy little drones and stuff and come out here and fly because the council says they're not allowed to in the parks. And so if there's a big central business hub here, it can bring in people from around the world. And that's... <laughs> so you've, you've come out to see today, and if this is just a one day snapshot, are you happy? Um, I mean, the other hangars here, have you seen any of them open up and anything happen in those when you've, since you've been down here? No, the only one is Bruce's workshop. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's good. Okay, thanks for that. Bruce, you got well, a follow-up? Well, the interesting thing, Roddy, is that um, Josh has done the right thing because he hasn't taken me at face value. He hasn't taken my word for the gospel. He's come down to see for himself. And that's what councillors need to do. They need to go out and ascertain the true facts of the situation. I could have been full of bullshit. And um, if Josh had believed me, that's just as bad as if he had dismissed me. But he's done the right thing. He's come to find out the real facts. And he's here today. That's what he's done. All councillors should be doing that because that's their job. That's their responsibility. Far too many councillors take what they're told as the truth without challenging it and that's why we end up with many bad decisions. So Josh your last name's got Smith in it, is that the same dismiss that Bruce just talked about? <laughs> oh, gee Roddy, <laughs> new material. No, no the Smith isn't actually blood relative to my family, yeah, my like triple great granddad was adopted and his adopted family's surname was Smith lovely. and then on his wedding day took the holy from his birth parents. That's lovely. Thank you for that. Know, actually, I'd like to make a challenge to all other councillors is to go out and look at their assets because I bet you none of them on the council right now knows the value in this. They want a return on what the airport can give, but it should be a return on what the community can give from the airport. Yeah, I'm clapping at the moment, but my hands are full. <laughs> Bruce, what do you reckon about what you just heard there? Have you melted? Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, it's, I've been very, very impressed by the response of the younger candidates. They seem to have a much more open mind. They seem to be. They're not sort of entrenched in a system already. They are willing to consider a lot of things that the older, more entrenched councillors are not open to. And this, we've seen year after year, simply doing the same thing doesn't work. We need new ideas, we need reinvigoration of council, we need councillors that are going to come in and not dismiss things because that's foreign to them. They're going to look at them and evaluate them and see whether they're going to be of value and act on that, not on their own preconceptions. And that's really important. So I'd like to see a rejuvenation of council. We need some of the existing councillors in there to provide the the base for experience, but we do need new new faces in there. We absolutely need it. That's good. Are you going to go and fly again? No. Well, I'm going to mic up Josh and then I'll just do another interview. So thanks for that, Bruce. Very good. Thanks, Josh.